This video was edited on TrueNAS Scale 2108 Beta 1. That's exciting because they've come out with the betas and there's been some quirkiness with it. And thank you for all of you that do the testing out there. And uh, I'm among you now that's finally decided I'm not just testing it. I'm actually, well, using it for functional things like editing my videos and a bunch of my lab stuff has now moved and migrated over there. I wanted to really put some testing on it and make sure that things worked. The good news is my TrueNAS core systems have no problem ZFS replication over to TrueNAS scale. They talk back and forth perfectly fine, which is great. Now I can have some systems at scale, some systems at core, and uh, test compatibility and changes between them. I will be doing a full migration video because I want to take my TrueNAS Mini and convert it with all the data intact because a lot of people are going to want to know how to get through the upgrade process. I've talked about it in my previous video, but of course it's been enhanced more, but that's going to be a separate video to actually show you how to do the migration. This video is just going to talk about what I've set up so far, how it worked and uh, my experiences with it. And well, the fact that you're watching this video means they're good because it worked and I got the video uploaded after I edited and saved it all onto my TrueNAS scale, which is my working server for all this. Before we dive into these details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a project, there's a hires button right at the top. And storage consulting, that's where you'd hire us for that. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, here's the official announcement right from the folks over at TrueNAS, and this is their blog post, uh, Windows ACL Editor. I want to talk about this. We'll show you this in a little bit more depth in a minute here. But yes, this is something that it needed, something that they changed. I like the way they changed it, which is exciting. Now I got to create new videos on exactly how the ACLs work inside of here. I don't know if these changes will be reflected back in TrueNAS Core, but I think they're a little bit easier to understand and they're right. I think the whole editor and web UI, large improvement in ease of use. That would be something I do not want to overlook. It is a received a large in ease of use improvement. Yes, that's true. I think it's one of those things if you're new or you don't do this all the time. And because we're editing and working with a lot of systems for clients and configuring systems, it's familiar to us uh, as, as in my team, but it could always use a little UI enhancement and uh, they did a good job on that. The scale out is something I want to talk about. People are asking about this, and this is going to be its own separate deep dive video at some point where I set up a few of these and build it. So two command 2.0 provides a web UI for TrueNAS scale, which enables ZFS data sets to be pulled together as a cluster volumes, which span multiple nodes, clustered SMB access to those clustered volumes is a previewed on TrueNAS scale 2108 via API and will be web UI configurable with the upcoming true command version update that allows scale out capacity and bandwidth as well as fault tolerance. Let's break that down a little bit. And we'll refer back over to this forum post right here. And is SMB share available on TrueNAS Command Nightly? I don't see the option to create a share. No, it has been implemented yet, and True Command is still a work in progress. Now, all this is working with Gluster on the back end. And this is one of those little details that when people start talking about a scale out system, it's not like there's magic where you just click some buttons and yes, it's just automatically scaled out. There's still some planning and thought that has to go in there. They're trying to make it easy as possible. And if you're not familiar with Gluster, it's not exactly, although being titled Gluster FS, it's not like a traditional style file system. So you still have to build the VDEVs, take the drives, build them into a VDEV, build them into a pool. It's all stacked up on here. Then we have our ZFS pool. Then we have the Gluster tool that sits on top of that. And then we can tell Gluster to use multiple ZFS pools and then pull it together. And that's where true command becomes a glue to put all this together. And then ultimately how it's presented would be, let's say, an SMB share. And then Gluster determines which one of these nodes has the resources or for fault tolerance, you can design Gluster to have uh, the ability to fail over to certain nodes or or how you want that data to be done. That's going to be probably a separate deep dive video. There's a lot of work that goes into designing it. And I'm, I know a lot of you are going to town this. We already know this, but it, it's some of those things that I probably need to sit down and make a whole visual on for how this works. Maybe I'll sit down with the TrueNAS team. I'll drop some visuals and do an interview for someone who can explain it a little bit better than I can. But it's also very beta right now. So it's not like this is the easy solution you drop in. But this is one of the purposes of TrueNAS scale is what they refer to as scale out, as in stack a lot of servers together to create fault tolerance between physical servers. Servers. Now, TrueNAS Core resolves this by having fault tolerance by, I've reviewed them before, some of their high-end machines with dual motherboards and things like that makes a really fault tolerant individual machine. The concept of using Gluster is to create a series of machines and 
tie it across here to make them fault tolerant so your data is always available. There's some pros and cons of each of these, but like I said, it becomes kind of a rabbit hole. There's a lot to talk about there. And it's not something any of the home lab people outside of learning are likely to use on a basis. It's something used in a more enterprise market where you need absolute high availability for really high volumes of storage because Gluster can tie them together for larger storage or for fault tolerant storage and different strategies that can be used. But like I said, it's a deep dive that we'll do in a separate video. Improved system and sharing dashboards. Yes, they made that a lot easier. Enclosure management, such as the TrueNAS R series supports of mini uh, M series and X series coming soon. I'm excited when this gets fully implemented because this is what I'm going to be doing is migrating my TrueNAS Mini over. I'll migrate it before with this beta. My goal is to do it and I'll do a separate video of like how to do the migration. So I'm saving it for that, but that's definitely important. OpenZFS 2.1, 2108 includes updated version of OpenZFS, which lays the groundwork for future file system enhancements. IX systems contributed code for better scaling and work a process with processor cores to make tasks such as scrubbing and resilvering behave more reliably. So there's a lot of enhancements been working there for those of you following uh, some of the dev blogs, but there's a lot going on there. They also have, when you go down here, absolute ton of little bug fixes and things like that. More than I have time to cover in this video, but of course I'll be linking to all this down below. Another interesting thing, and this is not something I use, but I know a lot of people do, is container storage interface. The uh, Democratic CSI is now supported improved to be all API based. This will enable more robust deployments of TrueNAS storage for Kubernetes systems. This, and it's a way you can take your Kubernetes clusters and have a common storage across clustered nodes. Um, and they're integrating that into TrueNAS Scale. That's exciting. That is for those of you that are huge into Kubernetes, not really me, but it's gonna be a cool backend management for ability to do that. App application catalog improvement. Third-party applications can be deployed from a single Docker container described with customizable Helm charts. These applications can be downloaded via True Charts, which also provides process for users to build and customize their own catalogs. Now, I set this up, and I'll go over here to applications in here. There's a lot in here, and I have not... This will be its own deep dive into you know, setting this up, what you can do in here. But generally, because they're integrating things like Docker, this is an improvement over jails, not because jails have a problem as much as because finding as many developers that are participating in creating the images for jails is sometimes not a problem. And people have asked why things lag behind. This is one downside is there's not enough people putting the time um, or wanting to dedicate the time to building the most up-to-date free, free BSD jails, or sometimes even building a jail at all for something to run on the free BSD system versus, well, Docker is what it is. It's huge, it's popular, and having all that in here means you got a pretty solid list of items in here. And of course, the ability to add more on there. Even things that kind of surprised me was I seen the TP-Link Omada controller. I've covered some of the TP-Link Omada networking hardware before on my channel, and they have that. They have the Unify, and it's a newer version. Um, I think that's offered before. They've got own cloud, next cloud transmission, lots of things in here. Um, like I said, that'll be a separate video where I dive into setting these up because I really haven't set any of these up. Now, while we're here, let's talk about what I have set up and what I do have working. And right here, I've got in the background running. This is the, my TrueNAS Scale Trinity. This is the server that it's running on. It's named Trinity. I'm not clever with names, but hey, Matrix names have been good. Tank Dozer Trinity. It's got 30 drives in it. So Trinity seem right with three v, v devs and 10 drives each. But I'm doing some testing on here, seeing what kind of IOPS it gets. And so far, you know, 60,000, not bad for some of the IO tests. I was just making sure if I loaded it up, it didn't have a problem. The system is extremely responsive. And matter of fact, it's really not sweating whatever's going on here. And you can see down here, we're pushing a little bit of data. So let's go to the reporting. And you can see we're barely stressing the CPU running all this in the background here. I think, I can't remember what I was doing here uh, this morning. I think this might've been some application test I did, but generally speaking, the system is very responsive. And as far as speed, this is connected with a 10 gig connector. I don't know if we're fully saturating it, but we're pushing some data through here. So it's, it's moving pretty fast. Uh, this is not a reflection of exactly the speed test. What I do plan to do is before and after tests, I'm going to be taking my TrueNAS Mini, testing it out, getting a whole baseline of tests, migrating the VM off of it, upgrading it to TrueNAS scale. I'm going to be doing all these VM tests with XCPNG here. Uh, that way I'm using exactly the same VM, same hypervisor, and just changing what operating system the storage target is going to be using. So it's going to be the same setup 
just with true NAS scale. So I want to see if there's any major speed improvements that come from switching it to scale or the opposite. You know, does it slow down? Is it as fast? Um, overall, so far, all my testing at least works. That's the first thing is functionality. Then we'll test all these other things. I have set up here. One of the shares, I have a Windows SMB share, um, actually a couple of them. There's my videos that this video is being edited on. I have a Zen Lab backup over SMB. It's just where I store all the backups for a bunch of my lab stuff and lab VMs. Then I have a NFS share where I have it tied to NFS. And then we have a iSCSI share. That's actually where these tests are being run right now. Um, just wanted to make sure that works. So all those things are the most common use cases I have that I set up all the time for clients, for things we do here in the lab. And that's working perfectly fine. This is on a relatively high-end machine. It's got a Xeon Silver 2.2 gigahertz, obviously 128 gigs of RAM. And someone asked about being RAM hungry. ZFS is not RAM hungry. ZFS is RAM efficient. So the use of memory in ZFS and why the cache is only 62 gigs so far is because that's all it's cached that thus far. It doesn't like leaving memory to do nothing. I don't like leaving memory to do nothing. You should be using it for something. So the services that are running on here, the iSCSI and a couple other things, if I added Docker images, that would increase all the different things running on here. But right now, services are about only 8 gigs. And with uh, 120 gigs, we should probably have caching for the rest because why not? If you're going to request the same files over and over again, like the video files that I'm editing, why not have them cached? And that makes complete sense. So ZFS will consume the memory that's free, but then there are limits. So it won't just keep doing it to the point of detriment to the services. But if the services aren't using it, why shouldn't it just be cached? That's kind of the short explanation for how ZFS caching works. Now, as far as drive layouts and things like that, that's done pretty simple here in storage. They have changed those. I'm looking for the three dots to click on it. And instead I have right here, pool options, status. So you can see all the drives, how they're set up. I built uh, three 10 drive VDEVs of RAID Z2. This make it simple. And uh, so a lot of the functional layout is the same, just where the buttons are is a little bit different. So instead of getting little three dots, you have the little storage icon here. Add, export, disconnect, status, expand, pool, export data keys. The encryption works the same. Uh, not a problem there. ZFS replication, uh, no problem. As I said, I can target this as a replication from the other system. Matter of fact, I was just was replicating my videos back from my other core system over to here. No problems there credential management and permissions. That's where things get a little strange here. We click on this and we're going to say we want to view permissions. And it then pops this up. Then we click this to edit it. So it's, it's actually extra step, but a lot of times you just want to view so it doesn't bring you right into the edit. But this right here has the option to use ACL presets. So we can choose a preset ACL options. Or we can go and say user time, user group, and then add an item and we could add more users or if we wanted to add a different group. So you could add the item, choose whether or not it's a user, at owner, at group, or maybe we want an everyone option on here. Do we want everyone to be able to allow, modify, or just say full control? It's not too complicated, but it does give you the granular options for the ACLs right here. It's going to be something that I'll have to dive into in another video, but for the most part, if you just need to have a user and that shared user and allow that user to have a group, that is the uh, simple options that you can do. And of course, make sure you check apply recursively, confirm. I think I may have had a problem with it not replying recursively once, um, but then it did a second time. So I got to figure out if there's any edge cases that have problems. Of course, the other thing is I'm bringing data from another system over to here. So I may have created some of my own problems by not stripping the ACLs out when I was copying data. Um, I haven't dove enough into this, but functionally, I did. I always start with strip out any of the ACLs, get rid of everything that was in here before, then apply them, and then it seemed to work. And we're functionally back at a working system. And I'm editing on it, so it's working quite well. Matter of fact, it's not just editing. We're still pushing data, and we're still uh, pushing this right here over SCSI. It looks like it's about done. Should have some results on here, but so far, that's been working quite well. Now, system settings, uh, the one thing I'll say is when we go here to like the shell, and you can SSH in and get the same thing. Um, this is not something I like. Like it, 
I don't care for the prompt. You can change it. It's ZSH. It is com customizable. So you can do some shell customization. I just at least like to know what directory I'm in, what user I'm logged in as, which pretty much is always rude. But I don't know. You, you get some... I think there's some better tuning they could probably do on this. And someone commented also in the forum post on the same thing. And they talk about this. I'll look at what shells. I want to make sure I don't break anything. So I left it at default. But obviously, I'll do some customization to the shell because knowing what directory I'm in so I don't have to type in print working directory uh, seems like it would at least be something to be in there that should be good. Now, virtualization, this is not something I ever used in cores. I didn't think it was quite as well done as it could have been, um, but I'm excited because I'm hoping they did a better job in here in scale. So this will be something, once again, it'll be its own deep dive video when I get to testing this. Um, but that, you know, that'll be fairly exciting on there for doing it. Credentials, uh, this is still, and I, mean, I didn't set 2FA yet, and I really should, but under credentials, we also have the local users, local groups, that's pretty much easy. I just set up two users on here. Um, that's how you set up the users first. You then you go, they'll show up in the ACL manager to set them up with permissions on there. Pretty straightforward. This actually does look a lot like TrueNAS scale, so not too much of a difference there. The little bit of confusion at first, I guess it would be the data protection is actually where things like scrub tasks, cloud sync, R sync, smart tests, replication tasks are. Now the replication tasks I was doing from my core system to this and the automation part works perfectly fine. So when you're building these out, so on this system, on a different system, it has the same options for creating SSH connections and you can do it from here or there, even though it says semi-automatic and let's go over to my other system. You can see right here, SSH Netcat set up. I tested it both with just SSH plus SSH Netcat, and it had no problem moving data from this system here. And when I was setting them up, the automation part where it says, hey, semi-automatic TrueNAS core only, technically, I mean, I didn't try going from a scale to scale system, but going from a core to a scale system was no problem at all. Even using it's kind of automated, give the credentials of the other system. It logs in, creates the SSH key pairs, does a replication, and does it with a quickness. The speed on that uh, between the servers was as well, fast as the drives could seem to allow and uh, network system could allow to get it across. So that worked smooth, had no problems getting data over. So if you're doing a migration from that point, that works good. Of course, the next video I'll be doing is actually converting this particular system over to there. And of course, of course, this, I'm going to miss the enclosures being lit up here, but this is the system I'll actually do a video breakdown on for doing the migration. That'll be separate because uh, this is the system I want to upgrade, but I got to finish those before tests, get the baseline, then do the after tests. Now, granted, setting this up was relatively easy. The install went smooth, but I've only been running it for a few days and haven't had any issues. So this is not the long term on this. This is me being an enthusiastic user because that's who this beta is designed for. All of you who are enthusiastic are willing to roll the dice a little, deal with some risk and be willing to file bug reports when you run into things that don't work. But setting up NFS, iSCSI, SMB, the common things I use had no problems. I I know there's some people talking about some of the little Docker nuances and things like that that I've not dove into. So maybe there's still some problems I'll run into there when I set it up. But that's a full new learning experience for me because I don't really have anything that I'm running outside of from the command line for Docker. I don't use any uh, UI type management for it. So when I dive in and learn that, I'll see what problems I may run across. Now, as far as the migration, um, if you want to load this over the top, you should be able to import your pool. I covered that in the previous video. That should work perfectly fine. But reminder that if you do the ZFS upgrade to the latest version of ZFS, that makes it a one-way trip. You are not going backwards because now the versions of ZFS are out of sync. The TrueNAS scale can import ZFS, but cannot downgrade ZFS. This is one of the challenges. So TrueNAS Core runs a slightly older version. So if you do the ZFS upgrade of the pool in place to the latest version of ZFS, um, your data does remain intact when you do that. But going backwards, you can't just go, I'm just going to boot it back up over the TrueNAS core. So buyer beware if you are trying to do that. But I, I think it's worth it. I think it's exciting. I am going to keep using this. I'll report if there's any issues. I'm looking forward to doing the switching after I get some of the testing done. So in my opinion, if you're an enthusiast, go ahead and load it. I haven't found out what the gotcha is, what doesn't work, but hey, this video got uploaded. So I can tell you that SMB and sharing does work. I've also uh, have plans to, but have not tested yet, Active Directory integration. That does work fine on TrueNAS Core and has for a long time, but uh, scale, 
I'm going to be kind of curious about. I know it's got connectors for it, so I don't know where that's at. That's not something we test a lot inside of our lab, but I'm thinking about adding it to my test here in the lab to uh, dive a little bit deeper into it before we deploy this to clients. As I said, TrueNAS Core's long time proven track record means for the next numerous installs we have that are at large scale are probably still going to be core, but the enthusiast to me is probably going to be playing a lot more with scale because well, it's exciting and it's new and it's based on Debian. All right, links to everything I talked about below and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.